today, I would like to take a little bit of time to talk about the importance of iron and the role that it plays in um, both fetal and newborn, as well as up to toddler brain development. Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Dr. Blair Rolnick. I'm a board certified pediatrician and a mom myself. So in a lot of the wellness checks I do with my parents, I like to ask about their diet and specifically their sources of iron. And this is intentional because about 40 to 50% of all toddlers are, have been found to be anemic. And the vast majority of those cases can be attributable to iron deficiency anemia. Similarly, about 47% of all pregnant mothers are anemic. And again, the vast majority of those cases are also attributed to iron deficiency anemia. So why do we care so much about iron deficiency as well as anemia? So the times when the brain is most rapidly developing, and that's from the time that you are a fetus up until around three years old, also happen to coincide in the times that we are most vulnerable for iron deficiency anemia exposures. And iron is a vital micronutrient that is required to help build myelin. That is the cover to our neurons. It helps create neurotransmitters. And it also helps to supply the brain with um, the vital oxygen and energy it needs to optimally develop. Iron has been studied for a long time. um, And so there is very robust data available comparing infants who are iron deficient to those who are not. And unfortunately, what we found is compared to infants who are not iron deficient, those who are have impaired motor function, impaired neurocognitive outcomes, as well as impaired social emotional outcomes. And so it's really, really important to be mindful and aware of the fact um, that iron is in, plays such an important role in your child's overall health and development in these early years. And so this even starts in the fetal period. So there have been studies that show that Fetuses and children born to mothers who have um, iron deficiency anemia have significantly lower neurocognitive outcomes and scores compared to those who don't. Um, And so iron and iron education really should start in the um, prenatal period with either your OB or your pediatrician if you're meeting with them in your third trimester. It's important to discuss with patients, and I like to especially discuss with my patients in our third trimester meetings the importance Um, that iron plays as a vitamin or a potential supplement in their prenatal vitamin. And so as part of this discussion in the third trimester, a study I like to mention to expectant mommies is that mothers who take iron, especially iron plus folic acid, the combination supplement have been shown to have children at seven to nine years who have improved motor function as well as neurocognitive skills. Another question I sometimes get by expectant mommies during this time is that If you have a child who has iron deficiency um, and you catch it, are the potential consequences reversible? And unfortunately, what we found is they're not quite reversible, although it does help to start iron supplementation when you um, diagnose or find it. So usually the AP recommends checking iron between 9 and 12 months old. It usually accompanies a lead level um, because that is another common cause of anemia in children. And we know that babies who are, especially those babies who are exclusively breastfed, are not getting iron in their diets. Iron is one of the micronutrients as well as vitamin D that is not expressed in breast milk. And so babies get all of their iron um, through the trans during that time when the cord is clamped. So they get a big transfusion at the end of their um, third trimester during delivery which is one of the reasons why delayed cord clamping is so important because it helps prevent iron deficiency anemia. Um, There are definitely going to be instances where delayed cord clamping is um, not appropriate or safe. Um, So it's helpful to take a really good um, birthing history for or let your pediatrician know about if you had a precipitous delivery or your child was not able to have delayed cord clamping because there was a medical emergency because they may want to consider checking um, for anemia earlier on than six months, uh, six to nine months. But otherwise, most children then start to get iron through their diet 
um, when they start solids around six months of age. So again, um, if you're going to consider delaying solids or for some reason you've had to delay solids because your child has um, a feeding difficulty, it's again an important thing to mention to your pediatrician that you have not started solids yet six months, especially if you're exclusively breastfeeding because they may want to check um, your child's hemoglobin a little bit earlier. Um, otherwise, all children should definitely have their hemoglobin checked between um, 9 and 12 months with, again, a lead level. Some pediatricians will send you to a laboratory to do this by venous sample. Other practices might be able to do this as a point of care testing. So they might have a machine like we do here where you take a little drop of blood like you would do to check blood sugar um, and run that through a machine. And if it's abnormal, then uh, get a venous sample to confirm. Otherwise healthy children, I don't usually recommend iron supplementation unless we have discovered that there is a reason for them to have iron deficiencies. So for example, if they have a low hemoglobin, I'll recommend it. Um, otherwise it's optimal children receive iron through their diet. Great sources of iron are gonna be things like meats, um, leafy green vegetables and legumes. So if your patient or your family is vegan, there's definitely good options for them to get iron through their diet. Um, and, um, then ensuring that their milk consumption is not super high. So milk, um, especially cow's milk or bovine milk tends to cause a little bit of colitis in the large colon, which is where our iron is absorbed. Um, and so drinking more than 24 ounces of cow's milk a day has definitely been associated with iron deficiency anemia. So you want to, again, be kind of mindful of how much cow's milk you're giving to your child. If they're receiving uh, more than 24 ounces, you might want to bring it up to your pediatrician and have their iron and uh, hemoglobin checked. But trying to kind of limit that cow's milk intake, getting nice natural sources in your diet um, should be enough for most people to meet their daily iron requirements. The other thing I want to talk about is over-the-counter iron supplements. And so there are different availabilities of over-the-counter supplements for iron. The important thing to remember is that when they are over the counter, they're not FDA regulated um, and they come in various different forms. And so the amount of iron or iron requirement is based on elemental iron and that depends on the type of iron you're getting. So there's a difference between ferrous sulfate, for example, and other forms of iron. So it's really important um, and I would highly recommend that you do not start iron supplementation over the counter, but instead work with your pediatrician to determine if it, A, if it's needed and B, what the appropriate dose is and for them to prescribe it to you so that they you are using a source of iron that has been um, pharmacologically verified as well as um, is meeting the need, the need for your child. And the last thing I kind of want to mention is the importance if you are on taking iron prenatals or you are supplementing your child with iron Iron toxicity or iron taken in excessive amounts can be very dangerous. And so this is a medication that if you especially have other children in the household, you want to store appropriately high up in a locked pharmaceutical cabinet um, because often prenatal vitamins and iron supplementation for mommies come in gummies or things that look interesting and delightful to children. Um, and so you want to be mindful about where you're putting your iron because again, in inappropriate loads and high amounts, um, it can cause a lot of um, bad outcome. It can be dangerous for small children. So I think if you have any concerns about your child's iron, definitely bring that up to your pediatrician. There's tons of easy and more convenient ways now to test hemoglobin, like I said, those little finger sticks. Um, you can always run through what they've been eating for the day and kind of go through your pediatrician and make sure they're getting their minimum iron intake. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, please leave them below. Otherwise, I hope you guys found this episode helpful and, and interesting. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com. And don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.